report. We've had a couple of really cool um, uh, work parties over the summer. Um, it, it's uh, um, this is something that I think I would like uh, that uh, Friends Up group to to be a part of and to be a part of the Friends group is is different stewardship opportunities. So either adopt a park programs or work parties and things like that. Um, the volunteer work party, this this one in particular that you're looking at um, was in uh, Odell Park. And there is a summer camp um, uh, that the, the next door um, uh, runs um, th that uh, um, it's called Nature's Greatest Strength. And uh, they came out and they've been meeting on Fridays in, in Odell Park, um, which is great. And they asked if they could give back uh, at the end of their uh, their camp. And so we set up this and they, they helped. You guys were there at Odell Park last June and saw it. And it's, it was definitely in need of some new uh, beauty bark and uh, um, and some of the uh, weeding in the in the flower shrub areas and everything, and so they they did some nice work there at the entrances of the park and, and just really spruced it up. Right. Um, the other neat one uh, that just happened uh, um, last week um, was uh, out at Morrison Park, the Protect Our Parks group um, uh, had about five or six people that volunteered, and they just went to town on blackberry bushes. And uh, um, and poison oak and a lot of the stuff and got to the where you, you can see the stream again and that park is is uh, um, looking a, a lot better that the vegetation was really starting to kind of um, uh, start to um, choke in some of these areas so we'd like to try and plant some trees in some of these areas and and uh, um, and kind of revegetate that with some uh, um, native species. Um, and they also worked on some of the disc golf uh, holes they've been putting in the new tee pads, as you guys were aware of. And, uh, um, and so they had to move around a couple of the, tea, the, the, the signs as well um, to make all that match. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of this because I do get a lot of questions about it from the community that there is a homeless camp at Morrison Park. Um, in the past, uh, the, the police department has uh, removed um, homeless camps or, or asked them to move along when they are in our parks. Um, we do not have an, uh, a, a, the authority to do any enforcement ourselves, so we rely on police departments to do uh, that for us. Um, this particular camper uh, was at the skate park and the police department did move them, uh, but only moved them across the street. They, they, um, and uh, we contacted them after that and put up some new signs saying no overnight use and uh, no fires and a couple other things. And um, uh, the police department has said because of some of the, the, the new regulations um, and uh, both state laws and the, 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 the federal law with the Boise, uh, Idaho case that they um, uh, cannot uh, move them off of public property in this particular spot. Um, so um, we are dealing with it right now. Um, uh, we would uh, like to um, uh, have our parks clear of the, of the camping. This one makes us particularly nervous because of the, uh, the fire hazards and such. Um, uh, and um, we have, removed at least a full pickup load of trash um, from the um, from the camp so far and it, it is a, a big drain on our resources as well um, is it one person it's it's one person but other people come and go and sometimes there's more people but there's one uh, uh, regular person there and we we know the person we've talked to them we have asked them. I know that they that, that they're connected with the uh, um, with the services, the local uh, homeless services that we have there, and we uh, have have talked to them and, and offered services as well, or offered to connect them to services, I should say. Um, and they are uh, uh, happy at that site and not uh, interested in uh, um, moving on or or other services. So. Um, this is another one that I've gotten a lot of questions on, and I just like the board. When I'm getting questions, I assume that the board's probably getting questions too, so I just wanted to let you know. Um, there is a, uh, um, a 39 lot subdivision that is going in right along the Indian Creek Trail um, over kind of an area behind Rosars there in the Sebercroft neighborhood. You can see the, where the trail is, and these homes will be right up against the edge of the trail where, you know, 
most people when they're walking on the Indian Creek Trail or the West Side Trail think that uh, Parks District owns as far as the eye can see in either direction. And usually we don't even own anything. We just have a 10 foot wide easement through the middle of someone else's property. And this is one of those that was a uh, privately owned. We knew it was slated for development. It's a good cautionary tale that we were able to get in there ahead of time before the development happened. Otherwise this trail might not be going through, but we were able to build within the setback of the, 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 the creek. That's one nice thing about building trails on the creek is, is the home have a setback uh, from the creek, but the trail setback is shorter. So we uh, oftentimes it's land they can't use anyways. And so we were able to build in there, but um, uh, here's a couple on the left side of your screen, a couple of kind of before pictures of, of what that area looked like. And then a couple of the after right now that's kind of been clear cutted, maybe not exactly clear cutted, they left a couple trees, but uh, uh, cleared quite a bit. And that's where people are calling and asking and, and I'm sure they'll continue to call when the homes start building, getting built through here. So just so you're aware of that. Hey Mark, I happened to walk that this morning with my husband and he mentioned, um, oh. To keep an eye on it as the construction, you know, that we should be keeping an eye on it as the construction yeah. building because sometimes sometimes they'll put the fence, you know, construction fence in the way and it could block our easement. So absolutely. Yeah. And I think that I have indirectly contacted uh, your husband through uh, Kevin Liberty as well um, about a couple of these things where you can see the lot lines actually go over the tops of the trails. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that on this, but they go out to the edge of the creek in some of these cases. And I really don't like how they did that because it takes where we had um, uh, a single easement through the property owners, uh, uh, the, through the developers uh, land. We now will have eight separate easements through each one of these property owners uh, properties. Um, and we just need to make sure that when that gets officially platted by the county, that those easements get transferred Right. Um, and so we're keeping an eye on that as well. This is kind of the same situation that we got over in Arrowhead Drive where uh, um, the handle developments uh, gave us the easement. And then when they put in the lots, the lots all went across there. And now we have, I think, five different easements uh, across people's property for the Indian Creek Trail there. And that one did get transferred when we did that. Oh, I, um, I just... I'm not sure, maybe this is just me kind of splitting hairs, but if our easement predates the uh, separation of those lots, then I don't think that it doesn't, it doesn't create new easements. It's, it's the same easement and the, those lots will be taken subject to the pre-existing easement. It'll be on their title report. So I, I don't like, I, I'm curious what you mean by um, transfer. I don't think it'll transfer. I think that if, when, when they subdivide those lots, that it's not a new easement. It's the, the same easement that was there before. And we have, we still have the right to use that. I think you are right in the, 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 I think I was off on my verbiage, but what I was told by the city was to that, uh, to make sure that all of those easements get put on the, the individual title reports for each one of, not all of those easements, the one easement that we have gets put on all of those different title reports so that um, every one of those new lots has that. Uh, and the only way, or the only, all we have to do to do that, it's a recorded easement already, correct? It is. Okay. Um, right. I, I'm just following with this. The, the city's instructions was, uh, um, just to keep an eye on it, make sure that it all happens, I think. But I, I think it's supposed to happen automatically, but we just shouldn't assume anything. So 